Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spawncast episode 187. It is pre-recorded because Saturday night is Halloween and there will be people out and about doing things and and going trick-or-treating with some kids and stuff. So it'll be it'll be a pre-recorded video this time, but we'll be back next next Saturday night uh, live. But let's let's go around here. Our guest tonight, we have Rand Althor 19. Rand, what's going on? Uh, not much, man. Uh, happy to be on the show. Uh, I guess talk about uh, Xbox Series X or what we can or I can talk about it. The NDAs and the embargoes are pretty weird, so I, I have to watch what I say. But thanks for having me on again. Yes, they they, they did manage to get a couple of Series Xs and S. MVG with the S. MVG, what's going mm-hmm. on? Hey, uh, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I got the S, and I'm sure we'll, we'll be talking about that. Uh, I, I'm, I didn't get dressed in a lot tonight for halloween but i'm dressed as a crunching video game developer that's my costume <laughs> nice that okay that'll work that'll work and we have oj player essence what's going on man what's up good to be here just want to let you guys know to always believe in yourself you know what i'm saying just believe it okay just believe it and believe in yourself all right guys <laughs> <laughs> there we got we have jordan hi jordan hitting the links over there <laughs> yeah i'm uh i'm uh I'm a I'm Joel in one. You Joel in one. I'm Joel You've been waiting one. all year for this for this oh, day to do this yeah. costume. He, he did so tell good. us that joke like three months ago. He's like, I got this thing Wait, cooking up. Real quick, Jordan, can you lift up your uh your right leg real quick? My right leg? Yeah, I just want to see. Is there anything wrong with it? Shotgun, maybe, to the to the leg? Oh, no, that's where it <laughs> ends, right there. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, how's that, how's that leg doing? Is that a pitching wedge you got? Or is it a nine iron? What, what's going on? There? I don't know. I didn't see it when it went into my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have uh, Sean. Argentina. Marty! <laughs> Gotta go back to the future! <laughs> Yo, you, you look like part, like, partly look like that, the cloud power up of Mario Galaxy. Like, that's all your head. Like, I mean, that's fine. Like, like the it's cloud like a furry, power. Like a furry you know hat. What? What I'll give it to, you know, I'll give it to Sean. You go, you go all out each Halloween. I'll give you that. You were Beetlejuice that one year. Last year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You really, you really go for it on Halloween. I'll, yeah, I'll I like, that. I like it. I never was allowed to celebrate Halloween as a kid because my grandma thought it was evil. So I'm making up for lost time. Making up mm. for lost time. Okay, yeah. okay. And then we have, well, we have two Nate the hates here. One is Evan at the, up there at the top. I see him. Evan, what, what, what inspired you to be Nate the hate tonight? Just trying to remind people that Nate isn't an AI programmed by me. So, you know, <laughs> what, you that sounds like, st- <laughs> you be like shut yeah, up, fringe. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> that sounds like something <laughs> someone would do who'd want to prove, uh, try to trick us into thinking that he's not an AI that you programmed. Just letting, I, we all have a little hate inside of us. So I'm just letting it out. <laughs> Nate, Nate, you there? Yes. Okay, good. All right. Nate, what's going on? Not a whole lot. Dropped a new podcast episode today. And for Halloween, I am the shadow on the moon at night. Good reference. Okay. Then we got Max, Dreamcast guy. Uh, feeling a little bit sus. How's it going? This is my <laughs> terrible 30 minute Among Us costume. You can't see it, but right. I promise there's blood all down this arm. It just, it doesn't show up on purple. Nice. Don't, nice. Just Very please good. don't snap my neck. Just, I'm not, I'm not. No, that's why I, I got a screwdriver. That way I'm in electrical. I'm fixing the wires. <laughs> stab a little bit of a Hokage. Walk out. <laughs> hey, at least it's not a golf club. Okay, so I have uh, a few things we'll talk about tonight. Uh, we have the Series X and S and PS5 unboxings and some impressions of the hardware that we've seen so far. That Nintendo Direct Mini, which we'll go to Sean on. So, Sean, if you want to have that pulled up, we'll, we'll go over to you on that one. Uh, when you can you run down that real quick when we get to that. Halo Infinite's continuing development troubles that MVG called like two years ago. And I, I'm still looking for that podcast, by the way, MVG. I'm going to find it because that was some legit like calling right there like you you lined up the shot on that one so when, when, they, when they ship the game they should add that to the special edition you know as just a, put as the a quote from mvg on it yeah, <laughs> just do that uh and then we'll talk a little bit about the cyberpunk delay to to finish up uh there so let's uh, okay let's go to the series x and the series s then because we've had some minor hands on with it that we can talk about mvg got the series s rand got the x I got the X. Sean yelled at a blank spot on his table and somehow detached his finger from his hand. On did you Twitter. get it in the end, Sean, or did it work? Uh, did, did it work? No, I, I didn't get anything. Ah, uh, what? What did what work? Did you just? 
<laughs> complaining on Twitter sometimes yeah. works. It sometimes, does. Sometimes it think of it was. I, I was just fucking around, but like, yeah, I know. some <laughs> jackass in the comments is like, "You're so entitled." I'm like, "This is a fucking joke. Eat my ass." Like, what's I mean, wrong with you? That's the thing, you know. If 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 a company sends you something, you're a shill. If you buy it out of your own money, you're entitled. There's, yeah. there's no there's no winning in this battle, you know. But we did have the the Series X. Uh, I unboxed that. Rand unboxed it. By the way, Rand, good good unboxing on that for being kind of spur of the moment yeah, and thanks. all that. It, it worked they, out they pretty well. They moved up the embargo too because it was supposed to originally be today. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I was like, all right. I was talking to uh, I was talking to you in DMs about like, oh, what should I do? Like, I don't really have set up for this. And you were just like, just get a tripod and just put your iPhone on there. Which yeah. I bought one for Best Buy, and good thing I bought one when I did because they moved it up. They they gave us what they moved up the uh, the date two days and then gave us less than twenty four hours notice. They gave MG and I like twelve hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we'd ask, I, so I'm, we're like, I'm, wait a minute. I'm sitting, I'm sitting back, you know, I'm just relaxing, and then all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, I got to get this thing done like before tomorrow. So I'm like scrambling, setting up yep. lights on Tuesday night and, and whatnot. It's yeah, crazy. So that was all over the place. But like, I mean, hey, Max got all the way to a hundred thousand subscribers with uh, what was that? Just uh, what was that an iPhone yep. or no? It was an iPod or an iPhone four? It, it was an Five. iPod Touch six. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Hundred thousand subscribers with an iPod Touch. <laughs> yeah, hey, see, you can, yeah, you can do it. it. So yeah, I, it does I want to say I actually watched a couple unboxings. I loved yours rant, and I was in the comment section during yeah. the live premiere, and everybody was hyped. I like, I honestly. Rand has a really interesting, like, energetic voice. So it was, you know, like, he literally reads the whole back of the box. And I was like, this, I'm I, in vigor. You could read cereal. I, and I'd I did it. Um, a YouTube premiere for it, my first one. And I yeah. muted my, I muted myself. I can't stand my voice. Like, I, every time I edit one of my videos for the audio, I'm just like, how do people listen to anything I have to say? This is horrible. And uh, you, you, you gave me a big compliment. You said you loved it. But the, yeah, the intro yeah. was a bit cringe. People were giving me crap because I overplayed it. Like, I didn't know what it was. You know what I mean? I thought that was and funny. Like, it was a good bit of like, what's this giant Microsoft box? I thought, I thought box? people would know. The box is already open. I've known for, I've known since the beginning of October I was getting one. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess people didn't catch on to that, but it was, it was a big moment for me personally. Like I was so excited to get the system and uh, I kind of look at it as like validation for and er- you earned Xbox it. and stuff. I mean, you're, so. you're, in my opinion, you're the Xbox guy. I'm glad we bring you on. I mean, I, I think you're Thanks. It. So we, we got a chance to check that out. And as far as the box, all right, so they package the thing well, at least. Like, there's closed cell foam all the way around it, uh, which is good because the system itself is, it's it's pretty heavy. Like, it's not a light system. It's a little heavier than the Xbox One X. So it has some weight to it. Um, but other, otherwise, it, it doesn't tip over easily or anything like that. So it's, it's planted once you put it down. And the controller, I mean, you have the same controller, MVG, because you have the S. Yeah. Uh, the, the controller is is fine. I mean, it's still, it feels very much like the Xbox One controller you're using now when I was picking up holding it. It's slightly different with the curvature around the edges. And I do like the textured triggers. Yeah. Like, they have too. those dots all over the triggers, which are really, really nice. Uh, but otherwise, it's 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 not a whole lot different than the Xbox One controller. I like the um, clicky right the clicky triggers and the clicky D-pad. Um, I think that's a neat touch. I know. I think there's something similar on the Elite. I've never used an Elite controller, so this is like the first time. I've uh, yeah, a little bit. Like D-pad. the the Elite, the D pad on the Elite is all one piece unless you change it out because they have Got like it. interchangeable like magnetic pieces you can put down. But this D pad curves up, which is nice. That that's a good touch. Yeah. To have they they definitely did something to the bumpers. Yeah, uh, the bumpers absolutely. feel better, and I like the texture that they put on the bumpers and the triggers. It helps a little bit with the gripping. Um, the Xbox Globe button, or the Nexus as they call it, uh, is flush with the controller. Yes. Whereas before it's not. But other than that, it's like the D pad slightly changed. But other other than that, it's like the same exact controller with the share button, um, which you can actually kind of um, you can remap the the share button to do a couple different things. You can either have it do like a, a take a screenshot or start and end a recording or capture the last like a minute and you mm-hmm. can kind of with the accessories app change how you want it like a button press would be something and then press and hold is something else um so that's that's pretty cool I'm but sure. like when you're talking about the packaging i thought the packaging was pretty it was a premium unboxing now granted it won't matter two minutes after you take the stuff out but i don't know like i, I felt like microsoft kind of went all out to showcase that the series x is a 500 premium product that you paid for 
I mean, to no, be fair, like, we, we've we've seen what FedEx, UPS, and other things do to like packages. So I'm I'm kind of yeah. glad it has that closed cell foam around it because they'll they'll chuck it down the hallway well, on you. So I, I usually don't like to do the comparisons, but I watched the PS5 thing, and I, I don't know. There seemed to be a big night and day difference between how Sony packaged the PS5 versus how Microsoft packaged the Series X. I, I almost got the vibe with how the the system was sitting in the middle that like somebody was on their knees holding it up to you. Right, like take mm-hmm. this system. Like I, that was the impression I got. But mm. um, I, yeah, it was it was I, like the like you said. I didn't think it was as heavy as I thought it would be when I like got it. I was like, expecting this like really heavy machine, but it wasn't. But it's still a dense, heavy, uh, uh, you know, video game system. And yeah. to even get it to fit in my entertainment center, I had to take off a bottom shelf. That, lay yeah. it on its, its side. Wait till I that PS5 it shows up. <laughs> well, the PS5, I, I'm getting a digital one, so I might be able to get that horizontally. Mm. But um, that's it's a nice piece of tech. Like it, it really feels like a premium console. It's very um, bottom heavy too. Like the top, I would say third, maybe quarter, is just empty at the top. It's just a fan, and that's mostly it up there. Everything else is like in the middle to like bottom of it. So again, it doesn't tip over very easily, which is good. Um, so, but I, I mean, it's, it's a good system. We can't talk much about the software or anything right now, but MVG, that series S, that thing looked small. That yeah, thing looked really small. It's pretty tiny, man. Um, the packaging is, yeah, it was pretty legit as well on the series S. You don't get that foam, but you get kind of that egg, egg cut, that hard cardboard egg carton type look that feel, which is, which is nice. Um, I like the system. Like it's, it's tiny. But it's got some weight to it. Like I think you know, you guys were saying about the Series X, it's 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 heavy, but maybe not as heavy as you thought it would be. Mm-hmm. This one's got more weight to it than I thought. It's it's kind of like over four pounds, and um, there's a lot packed in into that little box. So when they showed the the tear the breakdown of it, where they kind of exploded the system out, it has the same kind of vapor chamber. It looked like that the series or the One X has. So. Yeah. I'm thinking, I mean, that that was pretty hefty in the 1X. That's one of the reasons it weighs so much. I'm thinking if it has something like that in there, which it looked like it did, that's probably going to weigh it down pretty yeah. well, even though it's missing a disk drive. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, it, it looked pretty small. Like, that yeah. looks like something that'll kind of blend in. I almost want an all matte black version of the Series S as well, because I think it'll, it would really just, like, disappear into an entertainment center like that then. I think if you took one to a powder coater or something and get it professionally done, it would look come up pretty good. But, I mean... To your point, yeah, I mean, remember Phil Spencer had one in his living room in the background, right? And no one, no one picked up on it until you know someone realized what it was, you know, months later. So I mean, it's very easily concealable and and, and stuff. So it's a series. Up. It has that green effect at the top too, or like as you move the top, it turns green. So that's pretty cool. That honestly looks really stylish. I like it. Yeah, I, haven't, I actually haven't put a disc in it yet, so I'll have to do that soon to, to check discs? how loud what it is. What are discs? <laughs> Who uses discs anymore? Look at look at Max's People like who like to actually own their them. games. Oh yeah, <laughs> don't, they don't teach it to literally the thousand games. Yeah, didn't you just hear what Amazon said about digital movies? People just <laughs> like to actually you know own, hold on to the you know buy and, sell and trade. After what, you know? after what Amazon just said, everyone should be buying their games now. <laughs> that, yeah. That that argument's coming from game companies pretty soon. I'm gonna tell I you. I prefer that now. getting all I prefer getting all my games for half price at launch, thanks. Hey, go to Walmart. <laughs> I prefer <laughs> I prefer just waiting because I'm not gonna be they're gonna just sit in my backlog forever anyway. So <laughs> Hey, so I'll say Star Star Wars Squadron's already uh twenty bucks on Black Friday. Exactly. No point in buying that game day one. Hmm Oh, you, you said you game share, right, Rand? So you cut it yeah. in half that way? Yeah. Basically, like, my buddy would buy Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and then I'll buy Cyberpunk, and then he'll buy Call of uh, Duty. So it's basically... That's the advantage you have. You actually have a friend. I, I, uh-huh. I, don't, have, I don't have that. Well, everybody's so. got friends. It's just you have a friend <laughs> that you trust enough to give you their, your, your personal information, you know, passwords yeah. and emails. No friends here, buddy. <laughs> yeah, friends are DLC in life, and I just don't support DLC. <laughs> <laughs> microtransactions? <laughs> My, yeah, the microtransactions. <laughs> I will say the uh, the PS5 unboxings, everyone's reaction to like how large that system was when they took it out of the box was pretty good. <laughs> Everyone was just a little shocked at how big that system is. So I like that's one of the things I, I just want to take the system and just people were asking, just make a whole video just putting it next to things to see how mm-hmm. many GameCubes tall it is and all of this stuff. So like that's a whole video on its own of just putting it next to different household objects. Well, but, I put the Series S against the 360 
the OG Xbox and the VCR. And I mean, you can see how much smaller this thing is compared to those. It is super tiny. So I think, you know, Sony, the people that, that have the PS5, I mean, I saw some people putting it up against like weird combinations, but like what would be really cool is if you put it up against one of those Japanese PSXs or one of the, the dev kits mm. or something like that, which they oh, are big, yeah. right? Um, then you get some some good comparisons going on, mm. you know. That is a good idea. I should do that. I also was thinking about at some point plugging that DualSense controller that I got today, see if it works with the PlayStation TV. Oh, I'm curious about that because it works with the PS3 apparently. This you see the the dual sense works with the uh sense, yeah. X, with uh X Cloud. Yeah, Austin yeah. Never showed that off. Yep. It's part of Microsoft's thing where it's like you know Phil talked about streaming sticks potentially. What better mm-hmm. way to be like, hey, you have a TV where you play on PlayStation and you already have a controller. You don't even need to buy ours. All you gotta do is subscribe to Game Pass to play the Bethesda games if you want or any of our other games. Yeah. I mean that's yeah that's that's probably something they're gonna push to do if it already works now. Just add any other native support they have to, so that button prompts and stuff show up correctly i guess or that it recognizes a dual sense will be really weird is if they took advantage of the adaptive triggers or any of that with it too just for fun just to be like yeah we can do that too with x cloud uh but yeah i did get that dual sense max you got it as well right uh, we didn't get a ps5 done box but we got the dual sense so D- doesn't this feel kind of heavy it, it like, is in a good way but i i like how heavy it is it is uh and i like the the overall shape of the controller it's it is larger than the dualshock 4 by a fair amount Mm -hmm. Uh, but i it's definitely made for people who have larger hands like that i'm a i'm a baby hand bitch and i I actually think it's pretty good (laughs) well one thing the dualshock 4 is so small though that's the problem yeah it definitely it feels big in my hands i will definitely say as uh, it feels uh big in my hands i think the one thing i don't like i love everything about this the one thing i don't like is man the lack of color looks really weird like the fact that even this has no color you're not a fan of the white I, I don't like monochrome. I don't like black and white. I think black mm. and white looks, it, it seems forced aesthetic. Whereas like every other PlayStation controller has some sort of color on it, but this is the only one where they're like, no, we have moved to beyond it. Like get over yourself. <laughs> it still hey, haven't fixed the biggest problem though. with The, the purple controller. one's just black and white for the buttons. Wait, what's the oh, biggest God, problem? So the it biggest problem good. is the symmetrical sticks. Oh, yeah, oh but... come on. Come on. I, at this point, we've adapted to it. I mean, even, Nintendo, even Nintendo's got the asymmetrical sticks with it's, the it's uh, Pro Controller. So, and Well, yeah, all theirs. All theirs are, are asymmetrical now. Mm. I do think that they might do something like that, maybe a third party. Because, yeah, I will I will admit, Rand, yeah, you start to feel it. Like, especially as somebody who's been gaming more on my Xbox. I, I just put 60 hours into Watch Dogs Legion on my Xbox, going to the symmetrical sticks again feels a little bit weird yeah but they've always they've always had symmetrical sticks though since the the early yeah. days so they'll, they'll that's probably at this point that's their signatures so yeah. yeah i'll just stick with it now oj's trying to say something we can't hear him because i think he's muted yeah he is <laughs> why the hell am i muted oh, okay <laughs> anyway um yeah i think it makes like people have been playing it since day one though well not day one but for on places for a long time the ape escape days man so yeah so i mean like yeah i mean it's it's not as good like especially i think that it's better with shooters shooters with uh, the you know when it's like tilted like that mm-hmm. i like it I, I like shooters better but i think with most other games it's fine you know yeah for me at I mean, least. Yeah, it's fine i just yeah. i don't know i i'm curious of other configurations i honestly love the feel of this so much in my hands it makes me curious like and what other i got this controller and they have it has the same oh yeah you know, mm-hmm. ones like that so that's the 8 bit mm-hmm. so i've been using that for like pc a little bit too so. that's actually that's closer to the dual sense now that i'm thinking about it than yeah. any other controller probably that's right there with it yeah, I was thinking that too. Like when I saw the, you know, the videos and the unboxings and some people showing off the controller. Yeah. It's almost identical. The Dual Sense so, it's quieter too, by the way. The button presses on it than in the DualShock 4. I'm so lazy. I could go get one of the PlayStation 5 controllers, but I just don't feel like driving. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know how you much just ninja run over there. You're going to get out of one of those <laughs> How much what's that? The MBG? battery life on one of That's those. That's a good things. question because it works it works on PC out of the box. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. My my guess is with all the stuff I've been reading all the the journalists' tweets. The, the one game they're allowed to talk about right now is the Astros Playroom, and it sounds like sometimes every single one of the gyros inside the controller will be working at once. I kind of have a feeling that maybe it'll be like 
six or seven hours of battery life if it's rumble and really? a lot of hack. Uh, I kind of get that feeling. I'm hoping it gets at least 10 to 15 well, is what I'm hoping. So, so the counter argument that I was going to bring up to y'all that I was curious is what if we get, because it doesn't suppose that the front of the console is going to have a quick charge port. So what if this has six hours of battery life, but 20 minutes of charge time? Would you really even care? It's, it's a, it's a 1,560 milliamp hour battery because I opened it up today to look. And check everything out. Okay, explain I that think to me like I'm dumb. What you would probably do is if it was completely dead and that was a quick charge port on the front and you had the correct cable and all of this, because some cables just don't, some cables are junk. Let's say they have like a specific one that you would use or just a higher quality one. Uh, it, you'd probably be able to go from like zero to like 30% or 40% in like 15 minutes or something like that, right? So then all of a sudden you, you'd, you'd be able to play for another three hours or something like that. Uh, is what I'd be thinking because the way it works is it's faster to charge from zero to like halfway or zero to 60%. But then like the last quarter takes a lot longer to charge for your phone or anything else. That's weird. I've never heard that before, but that makes sense. Yeah. But once so. it's said, yeah, it makes sense. But they have that. I like the, they have the wireless or the, the charging dock that I really like. And I got to find that for the controllers. I, I like the way it looks and uh, I already use one now for all my controllers. So I would just probably have that sitting down and just drop it on there when I'm, when I'm done. So um, but the dual sense is a pretty good controller. I got to use it actually on a PS5 because the adaptive triggers do not function unless the system tells them to the way it's set up inside. I'll have a whole video on that Sunday and I put up a video on Twitter showing how the, the adaptive trigger works. But if it doesn't have a signal from the system to actually activate, then it, it just, it won't work. So we don't know what the adaptive triggers even feel like right now, Max. We, so yeah right it's all theoretical to us i mean they look yeah. beautiful though i definitely think they feel different you can feel the extra stuff in there not activated. there's a little more there's a little more tension to them than the uh dualshock 4 slightly so um but we'll we'll see you know the only in a, another two weeks or so till the ps5 is out so mm -hmm. uh, when's the launch date sorry the uh, 12th the 12th for the ps5 yeah it's mm -hmm. the 10th on 10th the for xbox. series so x 11 yeah. days till xbox oh so it's like the same week Mm -hmm. yeah oh sweet man that's my gonna no be a sleep good... week i have so many games that's gonna be a... that's gonna be a good week unless yep. you're in, unless you're in europe and that's the oh 19th, i believe oh yeah my, my friend mr peel was complaining about that on twitter he's like this isn't fair <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like yeah it looks like everyone ha or a lot of media has the series x the series s and now the ps5 so Another week or so until embargoes start going up everywhere and we'll see actual reviews for games and hopefully Spider-Man and Demon's Souls get reviews ahead of launch as well. So exciting yeah. stuff, though. I've seen the with those leaked pictures, it looks like they're already full blown playing Spider-Man. Do you see that? Do you see that leaked video of Spider-Man loading I in did. from the menu? Yeah. You, when you DM that to me, I watched that like 10 times because it's just the guy be like, here, here is from dashboard to game in a second. Oh. Dude, it was so fast. Yeah. So it's, yeah, the load times are there. It's, it's, uh, it's basically gone now. So that's really cool. Um, but let's, uh, let's go over Sean direct mini. We got a direct mini out of we nowhere. Did. You know, okay. So this is the weird thing because Nate brought this up. Nate, what did you bring up to me about that demo? Ahead Which of demo? time. The, oh, uh, Age of Calamity. Age of Calamity. <laughs> Yeah, I mentioned to you, I was like, it's weird how everyone's talking about the demo, and usually when a demo from Nintendo leaks, the immediate thing is you have the rumor saying, oh, Direct has to happen, and nobody did it this time. Okay, everyone, a round of applause for the Nintendo community. We, we didn't we didn't, throw, <laughs> we didn't throw a Direct out there immediately after something like that happened, so that's good to hear. That's, that's good. That, that seems like an I, accomplishment. You know what? <laughs> I think it happened because it's Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, and everyone's like, well, it's Nintendo. And Nintendo hasn't had a general direct this year, and it was a partner direct, so no one was thinking, "Oh, a first-party game that Nintendo, you know, like a Nintendo IP." Because if you think of, you know, Age of Calamity, do you think of Koei Tecmo or do you think of Nintendo? No, that's a good point. Yeah, you yeah. think of Nintendo, so Nintendo was sneaky. Mm. The little ninjas. Yeah, they I thought they know. were just going to drop the demo as well. I didn't think they'd have a direct mini but they did and uh it was pretty good do you have a list of some of the games that were in there sean i do so the first one was bravely default 2 which Ooh. got a release date of february 26 delay okay yeah so we we figured it was gonna be delayed we've been talking about a delay for this game for gosh six months nate five months it's been a bit because we it's hadn't heard about it and we were getting past you know the normal time where we'd be like they probably should start marketing if it's coming out this year and mm -hmm. it became pretty obvious but honestly i thought it was coming out in november so this is like a three-month delay anyway it's not even like a massive delay 
Um, but they got the demo. They did feedback for it and all of that. So just February. We'll just have to wait a little longer on it. What, what do we have after that, Sean? Uh, next up, we had Story of Seasons, Pioneers of Olive Town, which is also a spring of 2021 game, which is Harvest Moon, just not called Harvest Moon anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, surviving the Aftermath, which I thought was a Wasteland game, uh, which <laughs> looks just like a Wasteland game is coming out in spring of 2021. Um Immortals Phoenix Rising. I'm going to assume that was Switch version footage because it did not look as good <laughs> as the game. I'm not in a negative true, way or anything true. like that, but um, it didn't look as good as you know it did in other presentations. Um, that'll be coming out in December. We got Bakugan, Grifflands, yes. and Tropico Six. Is it just me or did Tropico Six look like ass? I, no, it didn't look yeah. good. It looked <laughs> yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah. What That's one of those five? C- How did they look? The first five. <laughs> That's <laughs> one of those CPU four. intensive games, though. Like, um, uh, what was the other city builder game that dropped? Like, just, just city, like Shadow City, city, city Skyline. City that runs into the, a similar issue where it's very blurry and it's super CPU intensive on the Switch. So it, it, I, I think Tropico could run into a similar problem. And then we had Hitman 3 and Control. Oh, boy. Control. We'll talk a little <laughs> we'll bit. We'll talk more about that one. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, no More Heroes 3 got a little preview, and the often rumored No More Heroes 1 and 2 released on the Switch with a stealth drop. Um, Part time UFO. People that's got excited. For, yeah, that, that's why people got excited for it. But I don't know. That, it kind of stuck out like a sore thumb in this mm. presentation to me. And then you got Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity that also got a demo. Okay, so I did play the demo. I also downloaded No More Heroes 1. So I'm going to play through both of those two before 3 comes out. I'm going to just refresh my memory on them. Uh, from what I've heard, those are 60 frames per second, though. 1 and yeah. 2? Yeah. Yes, both yeah. of them. And, and I've uncensored. Played. I've heard the European oh. people never got mm-hmm. it uncensored ever. So oh, wow. they, okay, apparently good. everybody everybody bled ash in the European version. Oh, like weird. weird rule. <laughs> and it looked weird. So oh. apparently it, it, everybody worldwide gets the true version of the game now. That's good to get those out there now with the third one coming up next year. I mean, we heard about it because it was getting ratings and it was popping up here and there. Yeah. And so eh, we figured it was going to happen. But I like that they did that thing where they announced the game and then it just comes out. It's just on the eShop right away. Um, so I'm glad that's been that's become like this thing for Nintendo this generation so far where they just keep doing that. So I, I do like I do like getting the announcement and then the, and the just random drop right away. Did anyone play No More Heroes 1 and 2, though? Yeah, I, I did. did. I did I a video on it. In the day. Okay, I, how, I liked them, but I kind of forgot them. Oh yeah, yeah. The first—I mean, the first one was pretty good. They, the world was kind of boring. I think the open world part, and then they basically turned it into a menu. It, from what I remember, in the second one, so it, was it was clunky. Like, eh. like the the open world in the first one, it was kind of clunky. It was it was it was cool. Um, the fact that you like you know you could go to whatever you have Travis's bike right, and like you can kind of drive around. So it's kind of cool. But then like the like the the hit detection boxes were so bad on there, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. and there was just like a lot of issues, uh, which are kind of still there a little bit. But at the same time, like the gameplay with the 60 frames per second, um, I did a video on it just kind of detailing, um, just kind of previewing like the first level and it plays so smooth. It's, it's, it's really good. And it's much deeper than you would have remembered in terms of all the different moves that you can do and, and like what you can and like all the different wrestling moves that you have and like the stun and everything like that. So it's, it's, it's still really good, even after all these years. The game is, what, 13 years old now, I think, at this point? The first game came out 2007, and then the second game came out 2010. Um, no More Heroes 2 plays better, though, because it, it, it gets rid of the open world. So it's mm-hmm. just like the 8-bit mini games. Yeah. So it's pretty much just 60, and it, I think it's even more stable uh, when it comes down to it. So, I mean, I think they did a... Engine Software, those are the guys who ported it. They did a fantastic job. Uh, on the game so i'm really really impressed i mean but i love no more heroes though i've been playing i played the first one played the second one played the the first one again on the the ps3 with the move controller and without the move controller yeah (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, i'm a big fan i've always liked no more heroes so uh so i really i really like it and yeah it's just setting up for the amazing like the amazingness of three three looks phenomenal like it looks so good so i'm 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 hyped for it Mm. Okay, very good, very good. What about Age of Calamity? We, we all play the demo. I played, I played a couple hours of it so far, and it is, it is a lengthy demo for what it I was is. expecting it to be. Um, yeah, I played a lengthy demo. What did you, what did you think about it, Sean? 
it was it was really good i i like all the additions that they made um it's not 60 frames like definitive edition was on the switch and it doesn't look good in handheld mode i yeah i noticed that it, it kind of gets blurry and the frame rate struggles kind of badly at times i was a little surprised like if a lot of things are happening on screen that frame rate starts to chug yes. kind of bad like I'm, i was it was shockingly bad at times when it comes to that but the game's pretty fun I'll give them this. There's a lot going on in that game. Like when you're running around, destroying everything, and then you switch over to to Zelda, and like the move set is so different from the other characters that yeah. you're just playing it. That's the one nice thing is all the characters' move sets are so different from each other, and you're playing as like Zelda, and you're just dropping like all of these magic spells and stuff. It's going crazy everywhere. So like it's it still has that crazy factor to it for for the for the fighting. Did you did you play it, MVG? Yeah, yeah, I, I picked it up the other day. I've only played a few hours of it, but yeah, I'm I really like it. I think it's it's excellent. I'm playing on the Switch Lite, so I don't know if you know those issues you guys are talking about are coming through. Like it doesn't seem that blurry on the Switch Lite. But one thing I will tell you is the font is it's like that Fire Emblem thing again. It's like super mm-hmm. tiny on the light. I can mm-hmm. barely make it out sometimes. Like I literally don't know which button they're telling me to, should, to press for, you should, for some commands, you, should, you know. You should dust off that light, Sean, and check it there. Yeah, I should. Yeah, you should check it out. But I haven't played it in handheld mode yet, so I'll, I'll definitely check it out in handheld mode mm-hmm. uh, to kind of go just a little bit more on that. You know, one of the best things that they did in terms of like the gameplay. Remember in Hyrule Warriors, uh, when you wanted to use like a fire rod, it was an actual weapon, but now it's an item. Yeah. So now you can like you can have a weapon, and then you can also use it as like it's like an item based thing. That to me adds so much more depth. You can have an ice rod, fire rod different items there that also yeah you just hold l and look. you can like drop the ice meteor on people <laughs> yeah it's 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 a fantastic addition because that was the one thing i was like uh eh. i thought that was kind of lame even in hyrule wars like you have to completely switch like the weapon out you know like okay you're just hitting people with the fire rod the whole time you don't have your sword you know so uh the different play styles too you know impa is her play style it's freaking crazy i love impa so far she's like I, disappearing I all over the place oh, and geez. like throwing cars I mean, yeah. she's yeah. busting the hand signs dude she's <laughs> out here doing the hand signs and creating shadow clones and all sorts of stuff it's it's definitely more deep than what we saw with hyrule warriors and fire emblem warriors yeah. both of those games it's more deep those games have the performance right now like you know fire emblem warriors also ran in 60 frames per second in the performance mode um and then 30 frames in the graphics mode um you know but those games aren't as i can just tell just from playing it from the beginning of the demo this this game's a lot deeper there are times where people were just running around and it looked like breath of the wild when they were just running around yep. like yeah. off yeah. out of battle and all of this so that, but the hyrule field part when you're in that open yeah. field and you see all the all the visual effects on cue you're like ooh, this this feels breath of the wild too almost in a way well then they had the map so you back out to the map system and like even there you can tell there's a lot of things to do where you're like leveling up certain shops i think and like and completing mm-hmm. tasks with depending on the amount of items you have and you're getting stuff there so it seems like there's just going to be is me one of those games it's going to take a long time if you want to be a completionist because this is just the demo so like it's i i think i think there's gonna be a lot of content here if you're a warriors fan even if not if we start seeing more and more of the story because they showed some of like the cinematics in there and yeah it, it looks like it's going to be really good for people who are big fans of the story can we talk but, about the story uh, <laughs> Yeah, I guess, okay, yeah, I guess we can. I was trying to think of, like, spoiling <laughs> stuff for it. Well, I mean, we don't have to, but, like, I, I guess I want to hear from you guys what do you think about the whole time travel kind of mm. element it, to it. I, I want to see how it's <laughs> framed. It is weird yeah. to think about a game that's a prequel that is a flashback time travel piece, basically. It's like, that's a really weird framing device. Mm. But it's also the weirdness of, like, so they already lost to Calamity Ganon in that timeline and now a time traveler is fixing that timeline but i guess they're gonna fail again and they're gonna yeah, it's, like, oh, it's, no. like the, it's like the terminator 3 right like oh, you can't yeah. change you can't change you know we have to destroy the, the other two terminator movies that way we it's, can make terminator 4 it's weird because they had the advantage of not explaining the story as much in breath of the wild unless you went looking for it so i don't know why we're uh, i don't know they they've gone off the rails and we're just in the demo <laughs> One thing I I absolutely love about the demo is the music. The music is oh yeah, here. like oh it is, sure. It's it's probably my favorite part of the game at this point. Like I love the if there's a soundtrack that 
you can buy physically. I want to I want to get it because it's mm. it's that good. They should have they should do a collector's edition. That's the, like like a big one with the soundtrack yeah. and all that, yeah, right? They're, they're doing, have, they're doing uh, that. There is one in Japan. Five copies of it. Oh, that's yeah. right. It's in Japan. There is, and but they don't ever do the. It's very rare for them to do the Zelda uh, collection editions for the U.S. Now. I think we would have already saw it. Like, if they were going to have one, it would have been available for us to pre-order, you know, at this a, point. Yeah, I wonder if they'll do a set. You know what? Maybe next year, because it's the anniversary, they'll do a big soundtrack, and some of those tracks will be in there. Like, one of those, like, big, like, scores, like, all the CDs <laughs> so and the stuff weird, in there. That'd the weirdest cool. thing is, like, Fire Emblem Warriors got us, like, a big special dish. <laughs> but, like, yeah, Hyrule Warriors it. in America uh, did yeah. it. There's, like, yep. but Fire Emblem Warriors got a big special edition here in America. I think, <sighs> I don't I, I don't know why, but they did the same thing with Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U. America didn't get that. There was, like, a scarf, and there was, like, a cool special Yeah, thing. that's there right. Was, it was only available, like, at the New York Nintendo store. store. Yeah, yeah Nintendo you had to be there a certain York. time. Yep. You had to be oh. there. You had to, like, physically be there. You know, um, so I, man, I, I wish they actually brought that stuff over because it, it actually, the treasure box edition actually looks really cool. Evan, did you play Age of Calamity, the demo? No, I actually didn't pick it up. I mostly just watch people play it. Oh, okay. I mean, you can download it. It's free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> rather not waste my time at this point. No, I, I, I made a video about it. I was, I was real impressed. I made a video just because I wanted to talk about, I, I think. I'm so interested in all the play, care, playable characters. All the different characters is going to be the funnest part to me. It's going to, I mean, it's going to, the save transfers over too. So that's good. It's basically, yeah, it's yes. basically a head start on the game. And that's, again, yeah. that's something they've been doing. They did it with Pikmin as well. So, all right. What? Let's, Who? What? Pikmin? Yeah. Did that come out today? It did. <laughs> I, I, I played it on stream. <laughs> Shout out to Nintendo for the review code. <laughs> I meant to, I meant to buy it today and I went to Walmart and it was just gone. They didn't have any copies there. So I, I'll, I'll try again next time. Cause it's $49 at Walmart. So, you know, nice. Going to get that $10 discount. Absolutely. <laughs> on that. Uh, uh, all right, Sean cloud gaming control. Yes. Did you try it? Yes. Okay. This is interesting. Uh, Rand, we talked about Microsoft and cloud gaming with X cloud. Indeed, because all all of a sudden Nintendo is uh, getting a bit more interesting in cloud gaming on their side too. They originally had just done cloud gaming in Japan. It was with Resident Evil Seven, from what I remember, and um, Assassin's Creed, Odyssey. Assassin's Odyssey. Creed Odyssey, and we tried to do it here. Remember that, and it was terrible. Well, it will work. <laughs> yeah, I think I got into Resident Evil for like right, like 10 I, seconds or something yeah i saw like the chick at the start where like yeah you know, you're talking to her and then that was it it was yeah yep. just good to shit uh it was it was interesting that it worked for as long as it did because it was trying to uh, work out of japan but now this is launching i is it most of the world I, i'm trying to figure out how much of it it is because i'm sure that it's not everywhere but i know in the u.s it works so I think they, it is most um most yeah because i got a i got a uh, one of my users that's in australia and he well he he tried he can download it but he had to wait in the server queue for it. so the way it works you just you download the 68 megabyte control file and then it basically just opens the game i assume in a data center somewhere and then you're just streaming the game but you can play control for a little while and then it's like oh go buy it for 40 dollars. i guess the control ultimate edition all of that yeah. so here we are now with nintendo doing cloud streaming for games hitman 3 is coming next year I I don't know. We were talking about X Cloud before on the Switch, weren't we? It's yeah. uh, it's interesting it's, now. It's, all of a sudden, uh, it's North America, oh. Asia, consisting of Japan, Korea, Hong Kong, and parts of Europe. Mm, okay. So, Sean, okay. what do you what did you think about Control itself on the Switch? The experience of playing it. For me, it worked fine. Um, I know some people said it worked like ass for them, but I mean, it <laughs> kind of depends on your internet and stuff yeah. but yeah for me it worked fine I, I actually did both modes i did graphics and performance mode because if you just go on another account they don't care and you can try it again um but yeah it worked fine for me so i was actually very very interested in it and it's actually i'm actually gonna well we're in the future so it's saturday night so today i made a video about this topic <laughs> make sure you go watch it you son of a bitch after this show but no i think cloud gaming is a very interesting thing and i i i've seen a lot of backlash towards it from people like, eh, eh, but it's like you gotta look at the bigger picture man like you have to it, it it's to, it's almost to the point of where it's like you're either gonna get this game 
or you're not going to get this game. Well, let me so, let me ask you this, Sean. Would you be concerned that a developer wouldn't necessarily explore all of their options if there's like would do you think Witcher do you think Witcher three would have got to the point that it was on the Switch to where they're like, oh, this game would run if they had the option to just be able to stream it to the Switch? That's that's the one caveat. That's no matter if you're looking at it from a good perspective or a bad perspective. That's the one thing that nobody could really predict is how developers are going to util- utilize this because um ubutus or however you say it u-b-i-t-u-s how would you say that ubitus ubitus we're gonna say ubitus ubitus is the company that's doing it and ubitus has already said that they're doing more games for the switch from Mm. higher profile developers resident evil 3 was found with the fucking cloud version right on the picture (laughs) so that's obviously coming so it's like you know at at some point i could see concern happening but I mean, I, I, that's also, I mean, you also have to. Can I, can I of... interject just a little bit, Sean, Here with what go. you're saying? Here we go. I had a question <laughs> too after, after OJ. Can I? No, no. Listen, like, I'm not a cloud person. You know, I don't like. I'm not the, either. Well, I'm, but the thing about it, which I've been saying, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with you, but I think the biggest issue is like this. I've said this on here. Games weren't coming anyway. The Witcher is like the anomaly, right? We have The Witcher, we have Doom, we have a few games, but the large majority of games aren't coming over anyway. Resident Evil wasn't coming. These but Control wasn't coming, you know, and now it is. So I agree with you there. That's either you have it or you don't. Will developers not create the game in order? Like, I don't, I think that there's too big of an issue for them to take that. If they can do it and it can be done in a timely fashion that's profitable for them, they can do it because they they can make more money doing it the normal way because you can sell it in stores you could they'll make way more money if you just like the witcher 3 developers are going to make way more money than control or resident evil they they're going to make way more because it's physical right you can buy it um and it's digital and it's not reliant reliant on internet so i don't think developers are going to say oh now we're just going to go in and just do cloud version of it because they can make so much more money doing a physical version if they can but a lot of developers aren't good enough to do that and there's not enough porting studios to even get it done did you guys read the interview with the control remedy what they said about it yes yes you know so i think it's really going to be like a case by case type of thing but a lot of these i've I've said this before a lot of these games weren't coming anyway it's going to be games that were already released it's going to be the resident evil it's going to be control it's going to be stuff that was already released and passed whatever i mean if it came over to the switch a 540p version people are just going to complain about the frame rate complain about the resolution they always do so i mean like, like i said i'm not a cloud person but at least it's there it's cool to have it it's better to have it than i guess to not have it you know exactly and it's almost like at this point it's like well why didn't you just why didn't you just do doom eternal like this because obviously i want doom eternal on the switch i want it natively on the switch but the game sean the, i'm gonna tell you it's, it's, out it's, for a year. it's just time to Record. game pass that thing sean what whoa, 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 no. hold on hold on hold on i, I got a question for sean, sean. has game pass he has his xbox hooked sean. up <laughs> so how are you giving Control a pass when we've mm-hmm. been shitting on Stadia for the last oh, one? Mm, Ooh, dragon oh, MVG. Interesting. $40. $40 for that game. 40? It's not worth 40 bucks. Oh, no, 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 no. I did not say it was worth. I did not say anything about the value of the game, the price of the game. Should you buy the game? I was simply asked how I thought about the game, how it performed about the game. <laughs> the Stenographer, game read back the minutes. <laughs> the, 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 the game performed great for me. Did I buy the game? No, fuck no. No, it's really weird. I, I thought you were dressed as Doc Brown, and here you are as a politician being like, <laughs> I, I enjoy many kinds of games. <laughs> I think it's... I, it, Max, the image, no, fucked, right? I, didn't, I didn't buy Control. I'm not buying Control at $40. If it's a game that interests me, sure, I'll check it out. But if it's something like Control, no. What if so, there was What if there was a subscription service on the Switch that's, that that's let you do cloud at, like, gaming? If, if they actually added a tier like above what they have, maybe add another... like three dollars a month or five dollars a month on top of the current subscription and it gives you the pool of cloud-based games i think that would be kind of cool but like uh, i can't see anyone buying control for forty dollars what if know? there was a well, if, that's the, that's if only the there was thing. a if only there was a company out there that that had a whole streaming platform that that would actually be able to bring yeah. something over there yeah. maybe they customize I, it a little bit I, i'm okay <laughs> with I, i'm okay with cloud stuff if it's extra the problem with stadia 
is that it's the main thing. Yeah. X Cloud, I'm fine. I'm point. fine with X Cloud. It's an extra thing. It's on top of what you already get. People cool, are yeah, whatever. people already have it anyway. Right you know, now Switch, it. it's <laughs> and like this cloud stuff, it's just extra. You want to play? Okay, but the main way to play is the physical games. Stadia, the problem the problem, like you know, Stadia and these what was what's Amazon's Luna or whatever? Luna. Mm -hmm. The yeah. whole thing is cloud. Everything's cloud. There is no regular base games or anything. So I think that's I heard I heard that's the issue. future though. The publisher mm -hmm. said that's the future is cloud. I mean, Oh, it's it's part of it because they want to make money so of course they're going to say it's the yeah they want people to buy the 40 we're hearing, we're hearing that we're hearing that digital is overtaking physical now and and all uh this. it's it's definitely it, playstation fans are definitely buying a lot more digital days that's for sure and xbox same game pass S switch so. yeah they're all they're all overtaking digi or digital switch all not so much ones. not as much switch is definitely lower than the other two uh, but Animal Crossing has almost a 50-50 split with uh, mm. digital and physical. But I don't know about like the rest of the stuff. I think I they know. put it. I, I think they put it out in their last investors. We can, fi we can I, find out. I think I, they had like a, they had like a card that went th like where they go through all the statistics. I think they put something out about it. I'll have to double check on it. Well, I mean, although they'll they'll probably put new a new card out in five days. So yeah, pretty they, soon, it won't yeah. matter. That one won't matter anyway. Soon. I look at it as like a like a win win. It's a win for Switch owners, and it's a win for the developers who can't realistically port their graphically demanding games to the system. So, you know, if Switch users want to play Control, uh, they're able to. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but is Assassin's Creed Valhalla coming to Switch? Or no. Is that no. A game? no. But like now with this, uh, Valhalla could come. Yeah. People could yeah. play that. Yeah. And yep. if any like. And if any more games like next gen games come, you know, that probably would sk skip the switch. Now, if this, this people are actually buying these versions, maybe they don't, or maybe they come to the switch pro. When's that coming? Releasing Nate, the switch pro is it, <laughs> is it next year, early next year, <laughs> just sometime next twice. year, but it ain't gonna all of a sudden run these games. Native. It's, people it's have too bad OJ can't put out a tweet saying that you confirmed the date right now because no. it's pre-recorded. <laughs> that's would show true. Up. But oh, I, that's I, a good idea, though. Think of like people like tune into that. I did mm. not confirm. Well, it worked. Anything. It worked last she time. Then we got, like, it, five, it, well, last time I did it, <laughs> the expectation it of it is 2021. We we have Bloomberg talking about it. We have Wall Street Journal talking about it. 2021. TCL said, "Congrats, Nintendo." TCL. <laughs> 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 no, their ass from their elbow. <laughs> TCL, <laughs> baby. Let's go. Nobody actually read that tweet or that article. The tweet is like, hey, thanks for using the same technology as us. To be okay. fair, Sh Sh Sean's a big TCL fan, to be fair. He's got one of those TVs in his living room right yeah, now. Yeah, he's I looking for two. that. Uh, he's got he's two. for that sponsorship deal right now. <laughs> he's for that sponsorship. Hey, man. Uh, I also, I also think that this can. is a glimpse at the future of the Xbox One. Because What's that? Just stream already, streaming? Well, yeah, they already said, and we already know that they're bringing xCloud to Xbox One. Mm -hmm. So basically, yep. if you want to play Fable and Avowed and all those games, but you don't necessarily have a PC or the new platform, well, you can still play it on your Xbox One console. I've been saying that it. for so long. Just just make these Xbox One systems just little streaming. Well, not little. Nate's VCR is a pretty big streaming box, but like streaming boxes, just do that. And uh, I mean, yeah, it would probably like Fantasy Star, for example, should just be streamed anyway, because that game has a hard time running. I remember MVG, you were running it on your on the VCR, VCR yeah. and it was like... It wasn't running great, so if they keep making improvements to that five years from now instead of discontinuing the Xbox One, that could even stream since it's an MMO anyway. You have to be connected all the time. But, yeah, I think you're right, Rand. I think eventually those will just be streaming boxes either way, so they'll never really go away technically. Um, I the think VCR that, I think will live idea. on forever. It will, dude. That, the VCR is already costing us Cyberpunk, so I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's somebody's fault. It's the VCR's fault. Uh, do I want to <laughs> see Nate's reaction... From when he when he gets a Series X and jumps from the VCR. To the I cannot X. believe you're still on that VCR, Nate. It performs admirably. I am amazed. Uh, dude, no, no, you'll go to the Series X and you'll be like, "What have I been doing with my life?" He'll be it weeping. Does, it does everything <laughs> I need it to do. I don't it's know. It's like man. my there's Galaxy S five. There's a pretty reliable. big jump. <laughs> there's a pretty big jump from the <laughs> S to the X, you know, when it even, just even in the same generation, yeah, like there's a, I, mean, I have both yeah. of those and I have a VCR too. That's well, unplugged. So see, this is where the As series X has a minor flaw. It doesn't really have a big next gen launch game. I'm going to be playing my Xbox one it, games again. It has dude. This is the, wait, it, no, wait, this has, is the big next gen launch game right here. 
That dude, this is now it has, it has some games. It has some games NBA coming out. Four K sixty frames for a second, dude. Yeah, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla is yeah, coming no. out. 4K 60 frames for a second, yeah, Borderlands 3. That's exciting. What else is coming out on the 10th? Says. What else is coming out on the 10th that I definitely have not played yet? Because we're not allowed to talk about any of these games. Let me see. I mean, Dirt 5 comes out a couple days before. Yakuza Like a Dragon. There you go, Nate. Grab that Yakuza. one. Yakuza. Yakuza. Oh, and yeah, wait a minute. What about Resident Evil 2? Little... But I've that game already runs at 60. Evil 2. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, what are you trying to say, Nate? You're trying to say Halo Infinite got got pushed out of this year, and now... Chris Lee has left the project. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm pretty sure to most people that name doesn't mean anything. It means everything. Well, they told us last time when <laughs> uh, when some of the other leads left that don't worry, Chris Lee's still there. Yeah, and now Chris that Lee left true. and they said, don't worry, <laughs> we still Chris got this person. <laughs> and then that person's going to be gone. They'll be like, all right, who's left in the office right now? We can say, don't worry. Because <laughs> At that point, they can say, don't worry, we gave the game to another studio. How about, all right, hold on, hold on. I gotta go over to uh, I gotta go over to Jordan. Jordan, how are you feeling about three four three right now? <laughs> <laughs> Your what costume says it, it all. Three four three. Unfortunate. That's all I can does, say. Does Shinji Mikami work for Microsoft? Technically, they should. Yes. Yes. He, he should. Does. He should step in. Well, Maybe they yet. should give Halo to ID. Uh, give, Halo, give Halo to ID. Maybe. That's an interesting. 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 Oh, at this point, just give Halo to anyone else. Dude, okay, so Halo just Infinite. Side hand it to someone. Dude, how yeah. how yeah. bad yeah. is this going right now with Halo Infinite? Because like I remember MVG. I told you about that podcast we did, right? You, me, and Nate. I didn't publish it. I should have because uh, you were you were correct because you told us a long time ago. You were like, it is not coming out next year. It's not that was. Yep. 20, that was 2019. That was December, I think, 2019, was, where you're saying that, that right? That was after my Portland trip. I had some stuff down in Portland. About <laughs> Halo. Yeah. And you're like, it, it's not coming out next year. There's no way. And uh, that was around the time they kept pushing for it over and over again. No, 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 it's still, it's still coming. And they, remember, they showed the Series X at the Game Awards. And they're like, holiday. We're like, well, they're not launching without Halo. And then they say it's coming. And now here we are. It is, it is not coming out in three weeks or two weeks. Is it even coming out before the... Because I heard they wanted it out before the end of fiscal year. I do not believe it's coming out in 2021. Oh my mm. god, that's strong claim. I was told when it re- when it originally was delayed that the plan was they wanted it out by the end of the fiscal year, which is July or June yep. next year. So I figured May. But I, yeah, I, I don't know anymore. I'm, so, I'm I'm specifically talking about the campaign because I don't know what oh. they've already split up everything. So I me it's like all right, I think multiplayer is coming out first no matter what. I think I think they're like, hey, if it's ready, we'll do a f- we'll run a flight. Like they're running a Halo Four flight right now on PC. They just put it out there, and it's basically an alpha. And they're like, don't tell anybody about this. If it's busted, just tell us. They'll do that. They'll run flights. The multiplayer will come out first. I think. So, yeah, I I think multiplayer first. Yeah. So I'm thinking campaign because they bring in what Joseph Joseph Staten and all these people to to try to get this thing done, and they bring in a person who's good with like cinematography and cinematics and stuff, and say why. Do you bring someone in for storytelling if you're just working out bugs to try to get it done? So there is a possibility Halo launches n- early next year, but it would just be like a multiplayer beta. Like the game's launched and it's just the multiplayer and it's in beta form and we can say it's a beta. And so people really can't critique the game, you know, because it's a beta, but then yeah. it's just it's just a release. And because they've already kind of, Phil's already talked about that. And I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I've already emailed people at Xbox and I'm like, no, it needs to be both at the same time. I don't like the idea of splitting it up. That's an emotional response for me. Um, That's because I, the game should just be, it should, they should sell it for $60 and just campaign multiplayer like traditional Halo for us. That'd be the dream. Here, I'm actually going to run this costume. It's okay. too small and it's giving me a terrible headache and I feel like I'm being strangled by a weak person. <laughs> okay. I, I fucked up. But thanks for right. Max. Happy Max. Halloween to everybody who sees this. Stay inside. Eat some freaking candy. Okay. Thanks, Max. We'll see you. Uh, yeah, that, that's the traditional route. You get multiplayer, you get campaign, and that's it. And then Sean just doesn't play campaign. All right, Rain. Let's, let's, let's get serious about this. So your co-host, oh Jez Corden, Mm-hmm. on your on your podcast he tweeted the other day and said this me and brad sams heard the same a while ago he's referring to chris lee there may be other major personnel changes coming down the line as well so watch this space is there any anything you can add to 
to uh, to you know the information about Chris Lee based on uh, what Chesley said? I wouldn't be surprised if Bonnie Ross is gone. Oh, ooh. Dude, are happens. they are they just cleaning hat? What is going on right now? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there was a complete overhaul of upper management at three four three. Wow! Wow! Dude, that is uh, that's bad. Like, what dude, happened to three four three? How long ago did you DM me, Nate? It was like like a few days ago when you said. You hear anything yeah, about was... Chris Lee? And I said, yeah, I heard that yeah. he might have left. I mean, yeah, there was rumblings uh, that something was going on at 343. But, uh, yeah, I, I would not be shocked if you wake up one day and Bonnie Ross is gone. Mm. Wow. I mean, it just it sounds like Microsoft is basically looking at 343 and say, we gave you guys this responsibility. You are not delivering. And we're looking at upper management as the cause of these failures. And we're holding you responsible now. We've had enough of you. Basically, you're over-promising and you're under-delivering at every turn, and we have to hold someone responsible. We're not going to hold every single programmer responsible. We're going to hold upper management. And if you guys continue to either, maybe they're being yes-men, and that's their you know self-implosion, and Microsoft is saying, you know, you've lied to us, or Microsoft saying, we want this game out as soon as possible, and maybe Chris Lee came out and said, guys, you want this game out by May. We're realistically looking at maybe October or November. And they said, that's not the answer we wanted. Now you're out. Dude, there could be a lot of turmoil with... going on. Think about it. Something major had to have happened with that game because they were so sure it was launching with the system all the way up until the game showcase. Yep. And then two weeks after the game showcase, they're like, nah, 2021. And now there's a potential it may not even launch next year or maybe late next year. Like there must have been a disconnect between what people knew at Microsoft, like who maybe weren't exactly yeah. involved in the decision and what was going on. Like there wasn't like a clear channel of communication about and how who, behind Halo was. Well, you, you saw and like who do we hold responsible for that though? It should fall on Matt Booty, right? Booty. booty. I mean, technically <laughs> he is the head of... He like is should fall yeah, booty. somebody, booty somebody should, should be should going to these developers this, right? and saying, "What's happening here? Why? Like, what is the problem? Do you guys not have enough resources? Do you not have enough assistance from us? What's going on?" And there's some sort of line of communication that is just not connecting between I mean, Microsoft and 343. We all saw that gameplay footage they showed, right? Like the at the their event for Halo Infinite, and a lot of people looked at it and said, "This doesn't." doesn't seem like a next gen halo game like and then people started comparing and they were like i think halo 5 looks better than this game and it was you feel like somebody internally looked at that like you're saying matt booty looked at that and was like yeah let's run that that'll work what if what if well, I, i'll throw another theory out there like what if matt booty never saw it oh no, the, okay or, then, then like, there's a know, there's like, a real problem i'm just then. saying like like if, if you're yeah you know if, if we're talking that big of a delay a year then they had to have known before the July game showcase that it wasn't going to make it. But yeah. They presented it like it was going to. So <sighs> what changed in the meantime? Like, I almost kind of feel like people at Microsoft didn't know the true state of Halo. And when everything was kind of revealed, they were like, what the F is this? Like, we literally have all of our marketing. It's on the back of the box. They don't, it's in the Taco Bell commercial. They you know, like. It's everywhere. Based on the gameplay snippet that they showed, it, it entered the story as like there was a mission, like the other crashing down, you got to get out. Yeah. But the gameplay didn't seem too structured of that of a regular campaign. I think what could have happened is that they didn't have a full regular campaign done. And the goal was that, oh, we'll just show this. And then before launch, it'd be like, actually, the multiplayer is ready. We'll do that and show that off and then move this aside and get that, that out there. Then there was huge conflict saying, oh, we don't have a campaign, which forced everyone to scramble and start making a full real campaign. I do not have a campaign after five years. What happened? That is a long you time. Not a, three, four, three. <laughs> was, could we be years right, right about those now. rumors about the game originally being on Unreal Engine 4 and then scrapping it and then building slip They space? built their own engine. And it's like, at that point, you're, you look at that and you go, guys, we let you build an engine this whole time. Like, it's a lot of checks that you're writing for that to get that done. And it's... At some point, you got to check on your money, right? Like where it's all going. Nope, not Microsoft. All right. So look. Fi all right. So I'll I'll give. All right. Phil said a couple times in interviews, we want people, we want them to do what they want, be creative, and all this stuff. I'll be honest. I think Microsoft's got to get a little more strict with some of these first party mm. studios. I, they got to go. They got to go check in. They got to be like, now nah, this is what you're doing. All right. This is, we need this. Then these deadlines. We got to get this done. I don't know. It seems like they're being a little too free with it. I, you know what I don't understand with ideas this game? For Halo. It's like, why is this? It's it's Halo. Why is this like 
seem like it's like harder than it should be. Halo is their most, that should be their most protected IP. But it shouldn't be like this hard to like make a Halo right, Sean? game. Sean, like... Sean, remember the good days? We were playing, we were, we were online playing Halo Reach, right? No. Oh. Those are the good days. Let's, I mean, go get, let's go get Bungie back. Halo, Halo should be <laughs> their biggest franchise. It should be their their name sake they're you know it's their mario, mario basically Nintendo. yeah yeah like and if it releases in parts with you know oh here's a here's a beta for a little while no you're just devaluing your franchise and what if what if they did get bungie back and bungie turned around and said we have to start over from scratch i'll take it you know what Man. i'll be honest i'll be honest we had that with with metroid prime 4 mm -hmm. and everyone sure. was like retros on it all right, we'll see you guys in three years. Yeah. You really think Bungie would want to revisit Halo? <laughs> don't no, care. No, we no. don't care. We bought them. I doubt it. Yeah, <laughs> but from all the rumors, Bungie basically wanted complete full independence of where to release all of their games, and that was kind of a sticking point. At least from mm. what I was had heard. I don't did, know. Let me ask you this: Did, did Microsoft in this in this let's go to the scenario that Microsoft has now bought Bungie? Okay. That, that Bungie's doing Halo then. Yeah, no, I, I, I would say yeah. they've spent way too much money on Bungie, Bungie for the price if they bought them, because mm. I don't think that price is coming down. Yeah, especially now if I'm Bungie, I'm like, you know what, that price just went up. <laughs> that price is up a little you know, bit someone, now because someone brought up an interesting point. Like, what if they also really went out and overpaid for Bethesda because they know Halo's time is behind it, and they want Elder Scrolls and Starfield, and some of the Bethesda games to more or less be the face of Xbox. Because you can make the argument Elder Scrolls Maybe. is a bigger franchise than Halo. Yeah, you could. You really? Could, you, you I don't know. If, I don't know if I'd go that far. No, it is. Uh, I, I, it is. Elder Scrolls? <laughs> well, I think you could. <laughs> what it is? Skyrim really? sold how many times more than the last Halo? Yep. Yeah, and it's been on a million different platforms. Yeah, but even, but, but even on but a singular platform, I think people still demand it on all of them. Elder Scrolls is there's no mascot. There's no identifying. There's no Master Chief. I see what Spawn Wave is saying. Yeah, there's no Master Chief for marketing. For people, it's just the logo at that point, just the title alone. It's the idea of it they seem to care about more than freaking Master Chief. Like, don't, don't really... I mean, based on four and five, nah, yeah, I don't think on. they have a direction for Halo. Hold on, back in the day when Halo Three came out, the video game world stopped when Halo Three came out. That was yeah, like it. That was yeah. the game. Like, that Halo was it. Three. That was a long time ago. Yeah, it was a very long time ago. So you know what we need, right? Halo what do you bungee back? <laughs> yeah. it, I mean, if bungee that makes the world stop, then why did Destiny 2 only kind of like bungee. Ah, Ooh, just kind of go Ooh. across? Did it's not Evan it's bungee. with the counter punch. Mm. Destiny, how much money? I, how much money did Destiny 2 make? They made a lot of money. They made okay, a lot of a lot of money. So even, much money that like they're actually. I, I, I guess they'd be fine. Destiny, now, but. Destiny right now is in a state of trying to get itself to where it wants to be out of mm. the country. Free from after activity. having to buy their own title from their yeah. prior company <laughs> exactly so i think i think that i think that whatever they're creating next or if they can fix destiny i don't want to say fix like it's broken but kind of take away the hold that activision had on them which is a lot of undoing you know th they're facing an uphill battle the whole time yeah it, it sounds uh, like their new focus is the same thing warframe's doing where destiny 2 is their title and for the next however many years we're just going to be seeing dlc come out for well, aren't it, they like, didn't isn't someone funding them for like a Nesty's uh, hundred million. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, um. Yeah, yeah, ten ten cent. Is, uh, is it was it was Nesty's. It was, yeah. was, oh, was Nesty's. Unless they're the same company, I, I'm mistaken. I guess it was, yeah, it would have been Nesty's, right? Yeah. What? Well, but they also uh, spawn. You gotta think. I know you think. Oh, get Bungie to make it because they're Bungie. But three four three is comprised of a lot of Bungie people who worked on the original Halos. Mm. I mean, acting you, like it. I mean, yeah, I, that point. may be true, but that may come down to leadership. And what you, you said, you don't, they don't have an idea. Maybe that's leadership not having the right plan for Halo. But you know, as far as I was told, like Bungie and 343, people, that's very interchangeable. People leave 343 to go to Bungie and people leave Bungie yeah, it, and come to 343. So then we got to so, go to the top. We got to go to the top then, right? It's the, yeah, it's, it's management. It's more, it's more management than we gotta like go. actual program. We got to go to the top. Developers. I told you, Phil's got to get on these studios. You gotta give Booty the butt whooping, you know. I can't. Well, no, not even Booty. You gotta go to Phil. Phil should yeah, be checking Phil, in with Booty. Booty should Booty be checking in with them. these studios. He's busy at the strip club, man. Oh Leave gosh. Him with, with <laughs> Booty. Oh, if gosh. I had to, if I had to say it, I think it's Bonnie Ross. She's been the head of three four three since the beginning, so mm. it's her vision. 
But she how many employees the are there, Rand? How many employees do they have? Do you know? Uh, I think three four three has about six hundred or so. Six hundred. Okay. I, I mean, if you six hundred. Yeah, six hundred. Six hundred people. And then, and then that's they a lot to lot manage. Stuff. Yeah, outsourcing, outsourcing yeah. managing. I mean, this type of stuff, it just falls through. I don't know if there's any one singular person to blame. I think it's kind of like everybody, you know. I, Phil Spencer, Phil Spencer included, everybody's to blame. I don't think you can blame one person or another at, at this point. It's a, you know? it's a house of cards effect, you know. If something yeah. at the top starts fumbling, it's going to, you know, go throughout the rest. Phil, of Phil wasn't strict enough. I almost see it as like a football team, right? Like when you play crappy football, it's not just the head coach's fault or not just the offensive coordinator or defense. It's like everybody it's the players it's the coaches it's kind of everybody's fault when things are falling apart here Mm. so i mean there is more blame though on some people if somebody fumbles yeah okay yeah it's your fault you know you fumbled when you shouldn't have fumbled but i mean like at the same time you can't just blame one person or maybe if you just get rid of this person this person is it going to make things better sometimes we've seen it do the worst like the opposite for coaches right you fire them the team's even more ass than they were before you know so I, I don't know. I think they just have to. Phil needs to come in and say, "Okay, this is what we're gonna like. Give me an actual plan of what we're gonna do, and yeah. when." You know, this is really starting to like, feel he needs like to just the, be a little bit more strict. Like like you were saying, Spawn. You know, the dead it, space. I'm oh, sorry. The um the Mass Effect Andromeda story, where there was so much discommunication or miscommunication between everyone involved, from the leadership going in and out to the employees to the studios all working on it. No one seemed to know what they were doing and everything changed on the fly. Next minute, one day you're doing this, the next day you walk in, it's scrap, you're doing something else. Yeah. I, I, it's, on, it's on everyone. Even if it is, yeah. let's say, really on the management, if there is miscommunication between a lot of other, it's it's everyone's fault. Like at the end of the day, the reason why Andromeda had all its issues is because there was everyone was at fault. The studios, their individual people were having infighting and management wasn't there and in and out. I think that's what's happening with 343. I think 343 is not working as a singular unit. They're very dysfunctional right now, and they need some real leadership to, I think, just full restructure of the okay. whole company. Real, at this real point. quick, when it comes to EA, I just blame management. When it comes to, EA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I don't, I don't blame I know, anybody so... else but management when it comes to EA. No, there's, no, there's... I'm, I'm best. Yeah, it's everyone. There's a lot. There's <laughs> specifically in that situation. There's a lot more than just EA to blame on that one. There's, oh, uh, there's definitely uh... some. There's definitely some parallels there, Jordan, with what you said about Andromeda, because both Halo Infinite and Mass Effect have gone through engine swaps, you know, because they started out with whatever the Mass Effect engine was, and they went to Frostbite, which I think really, you know, was one of the reasons why Mass Effect Andromeda was such a broken mess of a game when Uh, it first came out. Unreal 3. They started out with Unreal 3 to Unreal. They didn't know if they were going to use Unreal 4, and then they just decided that we're not going to use Unreal 3. Frostbite was the biggest mistake. And then yeah. Frostbite was new, and then Frostbite didn't even have RPG menus in the engine. I mean, it's just a mess. And no, I, I think Infinite is the same. You know that that transition to that new engine. I mean, it has to play a fact, has to play a role in in one of the reasons why the game is just, you know, where where it is right now. Mm. All I know it, is Bungie got it done. <laughs> I mean, if you base Every it off the of Destiny, 2, I mean, Destiny Two, the graphics in the game and the gameplay is solid. It's just there's just other stuff that's kind of like eh with it. But the gameplay and the graphics in Destiny Two are phenomenal. You know, they're pretty yeah. good. It's pretty, I mean, they it's went they solid. went off, made an original IP, and it's successful. So, like Bundy, even Bundy's in Destiny rolling. One, even in Destiny One, the gameplay and the graphics were solid. Like it was just content wasn't there. You know, it was kind of repetitive. The structure wasn't there, but. Everything else seemed pretty seemed pretty solid when I played when I played Destiny. I played the when they released like the collection or like the game of the year edition or like when they have all the DLC. I played that one. I forgot what it was called though, like what the subtitle was in the first Destiny. But I don't uh, think how far Halo's fallen in the last two decades. It was a real shame. Yep. Mm. they will be all right, man. They'll they'll fi- they they've got to figure it out. Well, it's not like, even like you can't. Getting, we're kind of getting closer to the point where there's going to be almost equally as amount of bad halos as there is good halos, and I don't like those odds. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. You know, we're, we're getting. Yeah. Someone brought up a sobering point to me that three four three has had custodian uh, has ownership over Halo for as long as Bungie has had ownership of Halo. Wow, for yeah. the same amount of time. Yeah, which wow. is incredible to think about. Like, yeah, when did when did that Halo anniversary come out for the 360? That was kind of their first. I think it was 09 yeah. or 08. I think it was 08. Yeah, that's that's been a while. So that's yeah. sad. <laughs> oh gosh. 
Uh, Halo Infinite. You think it? All right. You guys think it's coming out in 2021? No. Not uh, the full I, game. Maybe I, part of it. I, I think I a think piece of it will. Let's do. Think, let's say campaign. You think? We're, let's just go no. with the campaign. You think campaign's no, coming out? No. I, no. I, I think a, it's either going to be multiplayer or it's going to be a demo. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be. I think, I think they're, they're going to at minimum have a beta or alpha or some sort of test but i think by yeah. the end of the year if we're going to get anything it's going to be the multiplayer it's going to be like sea of thieves where they release it and there's just full, tentacles for the crack. full game baby full game end of the and year And i guarantee you this this multiplayer that they're going to release is going to be full of microtransactions so they can fund the rest oh they've of already the they've already gone over they already made the halo community mad about that too oh yeah, it's going to be even it. worse they it's got the coding worse. the coding system so yeah if, exciting if, times if <laughs> jez's info on that is you know more more is more departures are imminent or, or happening and if it's people at the top then you can assume that it's it's a clean house and they're 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 literally not starting over but they're basically taking it back you know uh, they're putting a stake in the ground and they have to you know basically regroup and that could take many 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 months to do that and getting new people on and all that stuff it could could be a while before we see the game come out I think, I think in film. some form, I think in some form it comes out next year. Whether it's just the multiplayer, um, I think I think it'll be out. I, I don't know about campaign though. Um, the race, the race between Metroid Prime Four and Halo's campaign is on. To think that this game was revealed in 2018, right? Wow. Right. Metroid Prime Four will come out the same year as the full campaign of Halo. What comes out first, Elder Scrolls, right. the next, Elder Scrolls Six, or Halo Infinite? Yeah, I think I think Elder Scrolls Six is still like four years, three years off or something. I, I, I think, think Elder Scrolls Six is Starfield though. Yeah, there's the thing because I think Starfield's the big holiday game for Xbox next, next year. Next year, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, and then uh, let's uh, let's talk about <laughs> Cyberpunk. <laughs> we okay. This is funny because MVG was like, "Didn't you say it was gonna get delayed again? Didn't you say that?" Yeah. I thought it was you. Like yeah. the first, like it got delayed recently, and you're like, I yep. bet you it gets delayed again. It's not coming. Well, yeah, out, I, I mean, it was after the the um the Shreya article about crunching after they had gone gold. You know, yeah. Um, you just got that feeling that they were nowhere near getting that game ready when they said they would. And look, it's it's 21 days uh delay, so it's not a huge you know delay, but. It's you can tell that they're really scrambling to get this game out. Before they mentioned the they mentioned optimizations around current gen systems is one of the holdups uh, QA or anything. probably just trying to smooth out crashes or frame rate issues with Nate's VCR most likely. Yeah. I mean they they, they got to get this game running on nine different systems. I mean that's that's unbelievable yeah. and got to make got to make sure it runs on Stadia. That's going to be the new normal for many companies over the ten next whole few people years. might play it on there. Yeah. I mean, oh gosh. what do you do? You know, if you've made that commitment to support old, you know, previous generation and next generation, then you got to get all those builds ready. We should have been done and talking about this game like half a year ago at this point. Like, this is supposed to be out in April. And it's like, oh, we just can't win with this game. And this game was, an, you know, we celebrated the eight years since the game was announced couple weeks ago or something yeah, we nice. give we give halo infinite a hard time but i mean cyberpunk has been delayed a lot this year i think it's the third time it's been delayed yeah but halo infinite looks like there's some like like True. it looks like people are like the be, different base, like getting fired on the spot and like get know, out basically nate, nate and i were talking about this the other day how much of cyberpunk have we actually seen like have we seen someone do a mission in that game yeah at all? They, they've shown yeah. they yeah. keep showing yeah. like night they keep doing like these nightwire uh if i'm saying that right they keep doing these episodes where they show people play through it for like well, 20 or 30 you, minutes at a time you can't be of. a house sure of what you're yeah, seeing but there was true. like a 48 minute video of mm -hmm. them like running yeah. a, i think a mission or two it, it could be very controlled obviously because it's like just watch yeah. us play the game don't you know we're not going to turn left around this corner because that's not done yet we'll go right this way uh but they've had people sit down and play it i know behind the scenes as well like come in and check it out so yeah, it, it it seems like apparently it's done on next gen platforms it's done on pc and they just keep mentioning current gen okay. as something that just needs some more work jordan what were you going to say then i was going to talk after jordan uh i forgot completely at this point <laughs> what i was going to say that go to make no, golf no. club hits the head it, honestly i think I think I was going to say something about like at least with Cyberpunk we we have like actual tangible like we've seen enough of it to yes. where we know there's an actual game with a story and ideas and it's playable that we know of. Halo we got to see one little thing and all of a sudden it doesn't exist. So yep. at least these 8 years have something to show for it and there's still like 
you know, they, at least it's still happening. Like, they at least we still have a date. They didn't say, okay, we're delaying it out of the year because of complications. We'll see you next year. They said, okay, here's a date. We're going to make it. And I hope they actually make it this time. Uh, I'm not too mad that it's moving a little bit longer because there's enough coming out that, like, the week before. It wasn't going to come out the same day as Calamity. It was 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 I wouldn't have enough time to get through Valhalla or Demon's Souls or Spider-Man or or Calamity. Like, give me – I'll take those three extra weeks, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm fine with that as long as the game is – I don't know if it'll live up to the hype that we've been having for it. But I do think it'll be a pretty fun time. Falls out of Game of the Year contention at the Game Awards Wait, now. I, I know that, that's Aww, the craziest. Can I ask part. you guys a question? That's the oh, worst part. Yeah. I know that's crazy. <laughs> the like the game they said it's preparing it, but the next gen version isn't ready day one. No. So, the, next gen, the next gen version they they said for a long time would be twenty twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. So they're saying, well, that, I mean, oh, we have to get the next gen version ready, but it's not ready this year. So I mean, is I feel like it probably runs fine in backwards compatibility mode is what they mean. And it's like, okay, it, it try to about? most likely that's what they, okay. cause it's going to run it out of the yeah. box. They'll run, you know, backwards yeah. compatible. It, and all it's going to run better. They're the banking PS5 on a lot of people Xbox. getting consoles for, so they, they got to make sure that everything's working on the newest consoles because they feel okay, like okay. a good demographic is going to be playing on there. Just uh, unlock that frame rate. So it can hit 60 on back and pad, please. Yeah, right. that'd be nice. Just do something like that. Just throw it in like performance mode or whatever they have to do that's going to be on the current ones where it uncaps it. That so. would be very do impressive that. If, if that game ran at 60, you know, backwards compatible. I could like see. The, I mean, that's yeah. the weird thing. This game started, technically they pushed hard with development when Witcher 3 was done is what they were saying. And it turned from a current gen game into a next gen game like throughout development. So it sounds like they kept piling ideas in and it eventually yeah. just became a PS5 and Xbox Series X game. Uh, so well, we'll see when it comes out. It's December tenth, I believe. <laughs> yep. that ex- I just that hate ex- to see all like the the death threats developers get over three yeah. week delay. It's it's, uh, it's pretty bunch of, pathetic. And... Bunch of frauds, dude. That, I mean, I I a, said most yeah. of the most people doing that don't even have their driver license right now. So yeah. Yeah. are you sure? I, I wouldn't be surprised. Go the... if... <laughs> I don't know, man. I wouldn't be surprised if people doing that are forty years old and have what? three kids and stuff. Trust me. There's, pro- there's probably some weirdo. Like, yeah, there's probably I, some people that are like, like being, that, yeah. being an Xbox fan. I deal with a lot of the console war stuff that I don't engage in, but I see it because people come at me over, "Hey, you like Xbox? Xbox sucks." And the funny thing is, most people who oh, that's are not. Par- that, I thought that was all parody. No, some of that's really honest to God. Like those people oh. feel that way, and well, I, I just I you just feel find bad, out man. that. I've I've had conversation with some of them. These dudes are fifty five and have like kids in college, and they they act like that. So it seems I, like there's a lack of stuff to do then in their in their life. No, it Probably. seems like there's a lack of respect in their mm. life. They because weren't like, respected. They don't I have anything looking like you know for them. So therefore, this is the way to express themselves when shame. they're upset. I can't imagine know? anybody young enough who doesn't have their driver's license even gives cares about cyberpunk they'd be playing Fortnite. like why would they be sending death messages to developers it's just gotta it's gotta be like 40 year old man babies who never grew up oh, you yeah. know that is that is an odd thing to spend your time doing i, I will agree it, it, bro yeah. you'd be surprised how people <laughs> spend their time gamers sometimes spend their their time oh goodness yeah. i i've seen all too much of it hmm. all right Oh, that's a, that's a fun way to to end it. Uh, let's <laughs> let's go around here. Rand, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, you know, it's always fun joining the uh, crew here to talk about video games. You want to keep an eye out on every uh, everyone's channel, MVG, of course, uh, myself and Rand, because Rand will be doing coverage on the Series X uh, as we're allowed to talk about it more. So make sure you subscribe to his channel and check all that out. I'm sure there'll be different perspectives on different things um, from all of us with those systems coming up. So exciting stuff there. Sean, I'm going to also have Xbox impressions <laughs> up. I'm just going to lie and be like, yeah, you know, I was playing it. I can't show you guys. No, uh, you can find me on Arch T85. Um, God only knows what I'm going to do. But I have a video up now talking about the cloud stuff because we're in the future. So go I'm watch just gonna that. Post this. I'm just going to post this on Friday then. No, son of a <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, you're good. <laughs> Check out Sean's cloud gaming video. For the Switch. Yes. Very cool. Nate, what about you? They can find me at Nate the Hate on YouTube. We have a podcast up there right now where MVG and I talk about cloud gaming on the Switch and what that means for your Switch Pro in 2021. We also talk about the idea of Nintendo introducing a new form factor of Switch hardware in 2021. Oh, is it the one I think it is? Maybe. You'll have to listen to find out. Is it the PlayStation Vita TV? 
Listen and find out. It probably is. We talked about that like three years ago. Go on. Listen and find out. <laughs> it's up now. It's not in the future. It's in the present. So unlike Sean, we're already there for you. They won't hear this until you, they hear about Sean's video. Oh, on <laughs> uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan, you didn't bleed out. Good job. Oh, Where can crap. they find you? Discord question. <laughs> Oh well, Evan's not here. Wait, what do we what do we do? <laughs> and do that's have, all the time we have. <laughs> uh, do we? Do you have him in the chat? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, go ahead. Fire through him. I don't, I'm I'm full screen over here recording. I'm I'm the backup recording. So go ahead. I, I, I can ask the questions if you if you want. Fire through him. All right. First question is: How well do you think the cloud versions of Switch games will do, both performance wise and sales wise? We kind of answered that one already, I think. I mean, performance wise is fine. I think it's still 720p with control, like because it looks still a bit fuzzy on this TV. Well, they're saying that they're gonna pull like ray tracing and shit off. I mean, they can do all that stuff they want from the data center if they yeah. if they want to. So, like that'll be cool to see that. Uh, and who knows, maybe image quality will uh, improve as technology does going forward. Like I said, you never know, cloud gaming could be the future, future of gaming, right there. You just don't own anything. Uh, and sales wise, will be interesting to see how that goes down. I. I I, I think it needs to be a bigger game than Control to really get a good test. Because, like, Control had a hard enough time selling on its own. Final Fantasy, what's that, 15, 16? Final, Final Fantasy Seven Remake. Oh, you know what? Remake. That would be a good test, I think. Or if it's one that launches day and date, like, same I'll, day. I'll, I'll say this. Everyone who says, oh, I'm not into cloud gaming. But if that game comes to Switch, well, I'm buying that. <laughs> Nate, <laughs> That'll be a reversal on cloud oh, gaming on Switch. Better. Nate, Nate, what did you refer to the Final Cyberpunk. Fantasy Remake as? <laughs> what edition was it? The cloud edition, the oh. cloud on cloud edition. That's right, yes. cloud on cloud. What if, what if, <laughs> Starfield came to the Switch same day as a cloud version? But that's that would be a good way to test right? it. It would be neat. Hey, I mean, as it's MVG cloud. and I discussed, we talk about the pricing and how they have to attack this with multi-tier pricing options. But Microsoft, yeah, yeah. Microsoft yeah. might not Hitman care as much because the Switch isn't Hitman Three going to be the game? Because that no. I mean, that's that, that's next yeah that's next year but it's still it's still game. yeah it's next game hitman hitman 3 but that's still that's still i'm thinking of like a like one of the really big games sean like something that's gonna be heavily oh, marketed God. pushed hard well, i mean, I mean yeah, hitman can... 3 will be cool because that'll be day and date and all of that i think right so. yeah that's what, I that's so. what I'm... we'll see uh, if, it, if it makes same day. next question but, metal mm -hmm. gear question of the week if you had to fight a boss from the metal gear franchise in real life who do you think you'd have the best <laughs> chance at defeating metal gear rex fat man the old guy, because I would just wait until he dropped dead from natural causes. Oh yeah, that's a good point. You can just take. Yeah, that's right. You can just wait. Psychomantis. <laughs> Interesting. Why psychomantis? That's the only <laughs> character I know. <laughs> Does Sean have any crazy Halloween stories from back in the Sonic days? Hold on. Let me let me let Jordan do his outro because we cut him off. Jordan, where can they find you? Yeah, you can find me on the internet under Pickle on YouTube. That's about it. Okay, thanks, Jordan. <laughs> thanks Did for not bleeding all over the place. <laughs> I tried my best. Uh, what What was that crazy Halloween story, Sean? Anything come to mind? That's that's not, semi safe not, for work, and we won't get kicked off YouTube for posting. Go ahead. Not not nothing that comes to mind from Sonic. I remember when we were when I was like thirteen, we went on a a, a mischief night, and like one of the kids, one of the, like the older kids who was like fifteen or sixteen, his brother bought us like a bunch of beer. And we just got like really drunk and just like destroyed the apartment complex that we lived in. And like the one you lived in, yeah. <laughs> you didn't go to another one that you didn't live in. You destroyed the like one you didn't live in. Complex. Like a rival uh, complex. <laughs> we were just, we were just bored. And, yeah. That was okay. Pretty uh, so was the other one. I mean, you can just go through them. Um, this one is mainly for MVG thoughts on oh. Shimigami Tensei three Nocturne HD using unity. Seems like they're using the PS2 code since they didn't add any new features or fix any problems. How are they doing it? PS2 to Unity translation. Interesting. Um, I, I'm I'm fine with Unity. I mean, I think you know if you optimize, then games can look pretty good. I mean, look at um something like Ori and and some other games that come out for Unity. Ukulele recently. used Unity, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that one that one had some issues in the beginning, but they figured it out because they got the new version. And the game actually looks it doesn't have that Vaseline effect, as Sean said. So yeah. the it, game's it, out in Japan and I've seen some footage in it. It looks it looks way better than the PS2. Does it have game. an English option in Japan? In the no. menu? Does it have, oh. Unfortunate, <laughs> unfortunately, because it's uh, guess guess who makes the game? Who is it? Was, yeah, Atlas. Thought I was Atlas. Get there. Oh, the, the, the localization expert. 
Thought I was gonna get slick there for a second and be like, let me just turn this English option on. Yeah, okay. no, they're Atlas. They, they 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 had it in there. Atlas removes it. That's what they do. Oh, good, good. <laughs> it's what in there. They just say, let's, let's take this out. <laughs> oh, that was close. Good, good. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't want people to actually be able to play it in English. Oh, actually, let's go to let's go to OJ between Discord question. Where can they find you, man? You can find me hating on Atlas. No, I'm joking. Okay. No, you can find me right here on YouTube. Um, I also have a super cloud video on um control uh, i did play the game uh so yeah my video is probably worse than sean so uh so but check out my video too um i also played a no more heroes uh so i have that uh, i had a video on that and hyrule wars i, I went through uh kind of went through each one of those games and we'll have no more heroes 2 and pikmin 3 i'm trying to get all that stuff done so that'll be all this weekend and like monday so uh lots of content for you guys to check out and i also stream daily so if you ever want to catch a stream come hang out chat Hear me rant about things, talk about how I run for 15 hours straight. Feel free to come through. Okay. We got Discord. Uh, any more Discord questions left? Yeah, we got two more. Okay, uh, cool. in, in the spirit of Halloween, what are some of your favorite costumes you've worn in video games? In video? Oh, in video games. Like just the video game characters? Yeah, I, th I guess that's hmm. what they're asking. That's a good question. I don't know. I was always just the basics whenever I was growing up. You know, like you're the vampire, the Frankenstein, and that stuff. But the ghost, your mom just throw the the white. Yeah, shirt right. Head, <laughs> I thought, that was me because I was poor. Yeah, yeah. We did that a few years too. We got the bed sheets out. Yeah, the bed sheets. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I was Power Ranger one one year. That was pretty cool. We didn't really do a lot of Halloween stuff. Now I think about it. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't really get too into it. I don't know. Is anyone ever a video game character other than Jordan, who's obviously Joel? <laughs> <laughs> I've always just done. I've what about Nate? Been... I picture Nate going to like PAX East, even to this day, dressed as some like maybe yeah. Ace, maybe Phoenix some, Wright, some villain. Yeah, yeah you know, know Phoenix villain. Wright or uh, Miles Edgeworth. I walk around and people are like, "That's a nice outfit," and I say, "Objection!" <laughs> to the corner with the fairy girl, and then she walks oh, away. Oh, I remember outside. one one year one year I was Jax. One year, I, I think it was ah, like yeah, cool. one year I was Jax out of uh, I think twenty eleven or the the the, the metal Dax. metal arm Jax. Yeah, metal arm oh, Jax. Nice. Yeah, yeah, Jack yeah. and Dexter. Jack and Dexter. <laughs> uh, Jax, not Jack and Dexter. Uh, just, okay, what's the I, I, what's the last one? Oh, I, was ahead, I could picture Nate being like the the bad guy from like Uncharted two or something, you know. Or, uh, no, from, no, you know what? I went Raider. to PAX East. I went to PAX East last year as John Rissatello from EA. I had you just, you just black like a... shirt, black pants. I had my hair slicked back. I looked like that guy from EA who looks like a Bond villain. He looks He's like a dangerous. like a mafia member's cousin. That's what I heard, Nate. I heard you look like a Bond villain. That was a the mafia. best description of you. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. B Bob Wolf then said I looked like a Bond villain. Well, if we don't You're have Bond PAX Gruber. East again this year, maybe next year we'll find out. You know, we'll get we'll get video of you, video evidence. Oh, there will be no video evidence. I tell people at PAX East, you cannot take a picture of me. <laughs> oh That's not a lie. I could, well, I, could I, say, I could see that. I could say I didn't get the picture, Nate. Yo, if we ever do a live like like tour thing of of the spawn cast, I I bet Nate would do that. If someone's like, let's get a picture with Nate, and they're like, he's like, no, <laughs> just swats the camera out of their yeah. hand. One guy actually, he, he's like, he's like, yo, let's get a picture together, and. I said it either has to be from my neck down or oh my over my face. So I just held a circle over my face. Oh. He's sitting there smiling and he's all happy and there's just a big circle over me. So I do have, I have counter measures in place. And the last, <laughs> uh, the last Discord uh, question is, what game do you wish had a Halloween theme? Halo Infinite. And I wish it came out at Halloween. <laughs> Friday the 13th uh, you should be able to play as Michael Myers that's a good idea hmm. yeah that's a good uh, idea it's not a bad pick <laughs> I'm gonna say Skate 3 <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> Skate 3 I'm trying to think I'm trying to think of a serious answer yeah a Halloween okay so a Halloween theme at a game but I can't so I'm gonna say MX versus ATV all out oh that's, I can think of that's one just a game that's if Nintendo, like Eternal Darkness, Halloween theme with it, I think that'd be kind of cool if they paired up that one of these days. Mm. Silent Hill Halloween. Okay. I think that's, uh, I think that's the casinos. <laughs> like a <pachinko laughs> game. Oh, gosh. Pachinko. Okay. FVG, you want to you wanna, uh, do your outro on the way out here? Yeah. Thanks, 
thanks for having me on. You can find me on Twitter at Modern Vintage G, YouTube, Modern Vintage Gamer. A um, lot of Series S stuff coming up over the next um, week. And all that's the interesting system to check out. I'm telling you, that's the three hundred dollar system. See how it performs. Yep. Uh, so yeah, just check out the channel as as always. And um, yeah, just uh, you also did your Series S unboxing. Make sure you check that out too. Yeah, check that video out too. That was that was a fun fun video to make. It was a last minute video for all of us. <laughs> you can tell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, th thanks everyone for joining us. We'll be back next Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern time. We lost Evan, but he'll be back with us then too. I think Comcast just cut out on him. So yeah, he put it on Twitter. Comcast. I think he oh. read quit. Okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. All right. We'll see everyone uh, next next Saturday night.